The people of Israel are being asked to help choose their country's new national bird. Here's more from our correspondent in Israel. Israel is preparing to celebrate the 60th Independence Day anniversary in May 2008. On this occasion, Society for the Protection of Nature had suggested to choose a national bird. Hundreds of ornithologists and bird lovers have composed a list of 10 candidates. Only one of the birds will get the title of the national bird of the country. In my opinion, the, the whole idea of having a national bird is uh, really to bring the idea of uh, nature conservation forward in Israel. Israeli citizens are invited to vote for a bird through website or telephone. For now, among the leading birds are spare-winged plover, graceful warbler, and yellow-vented bulbul. Choosing national birds seems to be a challenging task. On the one hand, the appearance of the bird is considered. On the other hand, its temper and features are important as well. The bird I would choose as our national bird is the graceful warbler. It's a simple bird that doesn't have outward charm or special coloring that catches the eye, but it's precisely out of this simplicity that the real singing voice emerges, making our life more beautiful and pleasant. Public opinion has a pretty portion of the final decision, 75 percent. The rest belongs to a special commission which is composed of experts in various fields. One of the smallest and most colorful of Israel's raptors. Celebrated for its devotion to its partner and its monogamous behavior, the male bears a gift to the female before mating will occur. It's not very abundant in Israel. Its diet includes insects, hence it's endangered by insecticide poisoning and smaller insect populations. It's also not very adaptable to change in the environment and therefore endangered by urbanization and industrialization. Red kites are distinctive because of their forked tail and striking color. Predominantly chestnut red with white patches under the wings and a pale gray head. They have a wingspan of nearly two meters but a relatively small body weight of a kilo and a half. This means the bird is incredibly agile and can stay in the air for many hours with hardly a beat of its wings. Unmistakable in flight, their cruciform silhouette and long deeply forked tail are unique. The flight is buoyant and effortless, with tail and wings acting independently to catch every shift in wind. It also soars frequently, usually alone, but occasionally in small groups. The call of the red kite, which is rarely heard away from the nest or outside the breeding season, is a buzzard-like mowing. It is, however, easily distinguished by its tone and the frequency and rate of repetition. Red kites nest in large trees and lay one to four eggs usually two or three in March and May. The nest is a platform of sticks built in the fork of a tree. The pair may have more than one nest, alternating between them each year. The eggs are incubated by the female for around 32 days. Typically, the male provides the chicks with food, although it is the female that feeds them. As scavengers, Red kites are particularly sensitive to illegal poisoning. Illegal poison baits set for foxes or crows are indiscriminate and kill protected birds and other animals. Poisoning is also the most frequent cause of death of kites. Red kites are especially vulnerable to the modern rodenticides used to control rats. The barn owl is a night predator, a very common bird with a gorgeous white chest and plumage. 
It's of invaluable service as a biological controller of rodent overpopulation in agriculture. Points against the barn owl. Despite its habitual monogamy, it is excessively aggressive, not considered to be too bright, and most importantly, not too unique to Israel. The barn owl is one of the most widespread vertebrate species on Earth, occurring on every continent except Antarctica. It feeds primarily on small vertebrates, particularly rodents, but also birds and reptiles. It also sometimes eats insects. An individual barn owl may eat one or more rodents per night. A nesting pair and their young can eat more than a thousand rodents per year. It has an effortless wavering flight. Like most owls, it flies silently. Tiny serrations on the leading edges of its flight feathers help to break up the flow of air over its wings, thereby reducing turbulence and the noise that accompanies it. They hunt by flying low and slowly over an area of open ground, hovering over spots that conceal potential prey. Compared to owls of similar size, the barn owl has a much more higher metabolic rate, requiring relatively more food. Pound for pound they consume more rodent pests than possibly any other creature. This makes the barn owl one of the most economically valuable wildlife animals to farmers. Farmers find these owls more effective than poisons, and they encourage barn owls to stay around by providing nesting sites. The barn owl calls infrequently, the usual call being a drawn-out rasping screech. The courtship call of male at nest is a shrill repetitive twittering. When surprised in its roosting hollow or nest, it makes hissing and rasping noises. The owl swallows its prey whole. Undigestible fur and bone is formed into a pellet which is regurgitated a few hours later, often marking the whereabouts of the owl's nest. 